Bro, check out this piece by Dutch artist Luca. It's called Biological Spacesuit. And yes, the entire piece, it has depth. Look at that eye. It sort of puffs out. Even the brain puffs out. If you go to the back, the same thing happens. And this is some stunning artwork. And actually, what I'm going to do right now is explain how the brain works on psychedelics using this. So that top part of the brain is called the cortical region. And it's where all of our sensory areas live, like the visual cortex and the auditory cortex. When I do neuroscience research with FNIRS, I can actually detect that activity of the brain. But I can't really go deeper. However, when you trip, the visual cortex and other cortical regions are highly active. And as we go deeper, we see the pineal gland represented in teal and the thalamus represented in orange. And these are two very popular areas of the brain. They're also very tiny, as you can see. But the pineal gland in teal, people mistakenly believe that that's where DMT is produced. We have no convincing evidence that shows DMT is produced endogenously in the brain. But when we're tripping on psychedelics, the thalamus is hyperactive and it does this thing called thalamic gating that messes up our sensory information. And then as we pan out, we see a very important area, the eye, specifically the retina, and specifically an area of the retina called amacrine cells. And these cells are implicated in psychedelic trips. And I actually wrote a paper on this where I presented a theory about why we trip and perhaps it all starts within the retina. Because the eyeballs are just an extension of the brain. And then if we go to another subcortical region, we'll see the cingulate cortex, which is right below the cortical regions, that little C area. And we have evidence that shows when people take deep ayahuasca trips, that whole area transforms. And then in the back, that little flower shape, that's the cerebellum. And we actually have evidence that shows when people take low doses of LSD, that area is very active. And we have evidence based on a fantastic scientist named Anya Burchard from UCLA. But overall, this is a really dope piece. And I really appreciate the time that went into studying the human anatomy, human neuroanatomy, in order to make a really beautiful and abstract piece of art. And of course, the 3D element of this piece is really rewarding. It's one thing to see the brain, but to touch the brain really tickles your tactile sensory modality. And if you like this piece about Luca, you should definitely give her a follow because there are many more.